On October 16th, we all celebrate the life of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, the French nun whose visions of Christ helped to spread devotion to the Sacred Heart throughout the Western Church. Let us learn the story of this amazing saint who is most intimately connected with the devotion to the Sacred Heart. St. Margaret Mary was born on July 25, 1647, in Jeannot, a small town in Burgundy. She was the daughter of Claude, a notable rotary, and Philibert Lamine Alacoque. From an early childhood, little Margaret was showed intense love for the Blessed Sacrament. She always preferred silence and prayer, while other kids her age were playing outside. Her father was a prosperous rotary. The family owned a country house and farmland. They were considered to be very rich. By the time Margaret turned eight years old, her father died, and this was a severe shock to her. Claude had loved his family dearly, but had been short-sighted and extravagant, and his death put them in hard straits. She was sent to school with the urbanist nuns at Chirol. Margaret loved the peace and order of the convent life. Under the care and formation of the nuns, she developed an ardent love for the Blessed Sacrament. The nuns were so impressed by her devotion that Margaret was allowed to make her first communion at the age of nine. Two years after her first communion, she had a terrible fever, which left her paralyzed and confined to bed for four years. She was brought home, and her mother took care of her. Some of her father's relatives moved in during this time as well. The relatives took charge of their farm and household, and very soon they became the masters of the house. Margaret and her mother were disregarded and treated almost as servants. Margaret sought refuge in the Most Blessed Virgin Mary. She made her a vow that if she would heal her, she would become one of her daughters. After being bedridden for almost four years, Margaret soon recovered. After Margaret's recovery, her relatives tried to regulate all her comings and goings. Not allowed to attend church as often as she pleased, the young girl was sometimes seen weeping and praying in a corner of the garden. There was nothing she and her mother could do without their permission. Margaret's only comfort in life was her frequent visits to pray before the Blessed Sacrament at a local church. At 17 years old, her family was able to regain control of their assets. The relatives left the house, and Margaret and her mother could be happy again. For a brief period of time, she lived a relatively ordinary life, enjoying the ordinary social functions of her day, even considering the possibility of marriage. Margaret's mother started encouraging her to become more social in the hopes she would find a suitable husband. One night, after attending a ball in an evening dress, Margaret experienced a vision of Christ. Margaret believed she had betrayed Jesus by pursuing the pleasures of the world rather than her religious vocation. At the age of 22, she put aside all worldly pleasures and resolved to enter the convent. She entered the Visitation Convent at paré le monial in May 1671 to become a nun. She started wearing the religious habit during this time. The nuns of the Order of the Visitation, founded in the early years of the 17th century by St. Francis de Sales, were famed for their humility and selflessness. As a novice, Margaret excelled in these virtues. A fellow novice termed Margaret as humble, simple, and frank, but above all, kind and patient. She could not meditate in the formal way expected, though she tried her best to give up her prayer of simplicity. Slow, quiet, and clumsy, she was assigned to help an infirmarian who was a bundle of energy. 
Although Margaret was wearing the religious habit in 1671, she was not officially admitted to profession until November 1672. Some years passed quietly in the convent, and then Margaret began to have experiences which seemed to be of supernatural origin. The first of these occurred on December 27, 1673, when she was kneeling at the grill in the chapel. The Lord told her that the love of his heart must spread and manifest itself to men, and he would reveal its graces through her. This was the beginning of a series of revelations covering a period of 18 months. Margaret immediately went to the superior and told her about the mystical experience. She stated that in her vision, she was instructed to spend an hour every Thursday night to meditate on Jesus' agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Margaret told her superior that she, a humble nun, had been chosen as the transmitter of a new devotion to the Sacred Heart. The superior thought this as a delusion and dismissed her. This dismissal was a crushing disappointment affecting the nun's health so seriously that she nearly died. Mother Superior realized that she must have done a mistake in dismissing Margaret's story. She prayed and vowed that if her life were spared, she would take it as a sign that the visions and messages were truly from God. In a few days, Margaret recovered, and the Mother Superior was so happy the superior invited some theologians who happened to be in town. They included a Jesuit and a Benedictine to hear the story. These priests listened and judged the young nun to be a victim of delusions. Like all saints, Margaret Mary had to pay for her gift of holiness. Some of her own sisters were hostile to her. Even parents of children she instructed began calling her an imposter. By her own love, Margaret Mary was to make up for the coldness and ingratitude of the world by frequent and loving Holy Communion, especially on the first Friday of each month, and by an hour's vigil of prayer every Thursday night in memory of his agony and isolation in Gethsemane. She eventually received the support of Saint Claude de la Combière, later canonized as a saint, who was the community's confessor for a time. He believed her testimony and chronicled it in writing. He also helped Margaret Mary to start this devotion in England. Finally, all opposition from the community regarding Margaret's visions ended in 1683 when Margaret Mary became the assistant to the superior. She later became novice mistress and saw the monastery observe the Feast of the Sacred Heart privately, beginning in 1686. After serving as novice mistress and assistant superior, Margaret Mary died at the age of 43 while being anointed. She said, I need nothing but God and to lose myself in the heart of Jesus. St. Margaret Mary Alacoque was the topic of discussion long after her death. People talked about her mission and qualities, her revelations and spiritual maxims, and her teachings on the Sacred Heart. On September 18, 1864, Margaret Mary was beatified by Pope Pius IX. The following are the 12 promises of Jesus to St. Margaret Mary for those devoted to his Sacred Heart. I will give them all the graces necessary for their state of life. I will establish peace in their families. I will console them in all their troubles. They shall find in my heart an assured refuge during life and especially at the hour of their death. I will pour abundant blessings on all their undertakings. Sinners shall find in my heart the source of an infinite ocean of mercy. Tepid souls shall become fervent. Fervent souls shall speedily rise to great perfection. 
I will bless the homes where an image of my heart shall be exposed and honored. I will give to priests the power of touching the most hardened hearts. Those who propagate this devotion shall have their names written in my heart, never to be effaced. The all-powerful love of my heart will grant to all those who shall receive communion on the first Friday of nine consecutive months the grace of final repentance. They shall not die under my displeasure, nor without receiving their sacraments. My heart shall be their assured refuge at that last hour. O Lord Jesus Christ, who didst reveal the unsearchable riches of thy heart to blessed Margaret, the Virgin, grant us by her merits and our imitation of her that loving thee in all things and above all things, we may deserve to have our continual abode in that same heart of thine, who livest and reignest, world without end.